Saint Michael. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on the earth and under the earth. For the Lord became obedient to death, death on the cross. Therefore, Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to the Lord my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who will your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who see God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord be with you, and with your spirit, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. <clears throat> One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Dear friends, we have entered into our final day before entering into the most holy days of our church year, of the sacred triduum, where we will celebrate the institution of the Eucharist, the institution of the priesthood. We'll remember on Good Friday the saving act of the Lord, giving his life as a complete and total gift for us on the cross in the glorious resurrection that we celebrate at the Easter Vigil and on Easter Sunday. However, even though as we're approaching those most holy days, it can be easy to focus ahead, it's important to remember it's still these beautiful Lenten days. It's still the Lenten season. It's still the opportunity of grace to turn back to the Father with all our heart. That we're given these beautiful days as that time to turn back to God. That this Lent has been like unlike any other Lent that I'm sure all of us have ever experienced. It's unlike any other Lent. You know, with the coronavirus and other things going on, having to be sheltering in place at home, we've never experienced a Lent quite like this one. And the idea can come across as, well, I've given up enough already. I've, I've given up even coming to church. What more could I give up? That's a very true point. We have given up a lot this Lent but it's still that opportunity to convert our hearts, to give ourselves back completely to God. And if we feel in our heart we haven't done that in these 40 days of Lent, we haven't had that 
break conversion apart. We still have time. We still have these Lenten days that we're living in to give ourselves completely back to the Lord. A common thing many of us can face in life is temptation. Temptation ultimately in and of itself is not sin. A temptation is what it, its definition of the word is, a temptation. There's an inclination to do wrong, but there's not the sin committed yet. We hear about temptation in the gospel today. And Judas gave in to temptation. You know, how much are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? 30 pieces of silver. You know, oftentimes with sin and temptation, we'll take something that's much lesser in place of the greater turning to God. He took 30 pieces of silver as an opportunity to hand the Lord over. But even in that bad situation of Judas giving into temptation, the Lord is going to use that for good ultimately. Because by giving up of his life, he gives all of us life and opens the kingdom of heaven for us on the great Easter resurrection day. But when these temptations come, these opportunities to turn back to the Father, they're kind of opposed to each other. They want, one wants to go one way, one wants to go the other. We need to turn to the Lord in prayer. We need to go and call upon Him with all our heart. And that's where the words from our psalm today are so important. Lord, in your great love, answer me. To go to the Lord, to spill our heart before Him, to truly ask Him, Lord, from your great love, answer me. He desires to know every little piece of detail from our heart. Go to him with that. Offer everything to him. That's where we get the strength to fight the temptation. In his great love, we receive his love. And then we receive the grace to choose the better, to fight the temptation, and to choose the Lord. Go to him. It's almost like going back to Ash Wednesday, where the Lord says, when you pray, don't go out in public and pray in big, long, lengthy prayers. Rather, go to your inner room and shut the door and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will repay you. The days of quarantine, there's no better instructions, right? The Lord instructed us how to live these days. Go to your room and close the door and pray to your Father. And your Father will repay you. As we celebrate the Eucharist this day, as we prepare to celebrate the Feast of the Institution of the Eucharist tomorrow, those of you watching at home, celebrate spiritual communion with us. May we be ever closely united to our Lord's sacred heart. May we have every grace to continue to turn back to the Lord with all our heart and to fight against everything that leads us astray from Him. My dear friends, as we remember the passion of Christ during this holy week, we turn to the Father to present our prayers to him. We pray for Pope Francis. May God continue to fill his heart with love and his words with wisdom as he leads the church through challenging times. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected leaders, may the passion of Christ inspire them in making good choices for those they serve, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who live with painful illnesses, especially those who are living with the COVID-19 coronavirus, may they experience God's comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here today and for all of us watching at home, may we, with the help of God's grace, continue to grow in faith and unity we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are working to fight against the COVID-19 virus, the doctors, the nurses, the techs, those in the healthcare field, scientists, for all who are stepping forward and being those first responders, those who work at our stores, at our restaurants where we can get food to go, all the people who are putting themselves in harm's way in order to continuing to serve us in need. We ask the Lord to bless them abundantly and to keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died. May they rejoice in the salvation earned for us by the suffering, death, and resurrection of the Lord. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we remember the intentions of this man. For Dwayne Keats and the intention of Kathy Lender, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most loving Father, you know each and every one of our needs. You know every prayer in our hearts. Look with favor now upon the prayers we present to you and the prayers that are within our hearts, and grant them all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that, celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished. And the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You there?